This video is for comedy purposes only, and as such, should not be taken too seriously. And of course, this wouldn't be The Walking Dead without a vehicle flipped on its side. That moment when you ask for the cheapest deal at the car wash and they just end up making it more dirty. Instead of driving the car onto the road after being dislodged, she drives it literally one foot further than it was and stops, which is exactly what got the car stuck in the first place, having stopped in the mud. How the hell has this dude managed to survive nearly a year in the zombie apocalypse being this dumb? So what, he used a f***ing jackhammer to make that hole? Look at the thickness of that concrete. That place would be swimming with walker corpses if it made that hole. There'd be so many corpses it'd never have been able to physically move them all away safely, since as we've seen, there's not been one found anywhere nearby. Have you taken a look around this place? The axe, the spikes, the walls? You think he's crazy? No, I think he's dangerous. That's a terrible argument though. I mean, he's dangerous because he built spikes to trap walkers in and set a couple of traps to catch looters and bandits. The better argument that he's dangerous would be that he shot at them, but even then Rick was the first to shoot, so really her argument falls apart. I'm going on a run. Where? I thought... Maybe the one thing people didn't loot was cribs. I love it. They find the world's biggest weapon stash and Carl wants to go on a run so that he can secretly go look for a picture. Shit. That's what we call the world's worst escape attempt. But also it very much looks like we're back into Carl hits puberty and acts like a moron territory. Hooray! I think I was gonna let you go in there? I just think it's none of your business. You don't know me, you don't know my dad. You don't know me, cliche. I gotta go back in. Where is it? We have to go back. We have to, I have to. All of this for a fucking picture. And another vehicle on its side. Well, that's what you get when you are noisy as fuck when you already know that walkers are drawn to you by sound. Having that there is all well and good, but when you consider that he entered the building from the opposite side to where he sat down, it becomes a 50-50 chance that Rick wouldn't have ended up sitting there instead. He's already in there. Sat down with Rick. Wouldn't he struggle to drive this car, even if it wasn't automatic, given that his right leg is no longer with him? Andrew told me about your baby. That it might be your partner's. What in the holy hell kind of reason would she possibly have had to have told him that? I don't even understand how Rick's life before arriving at the prison would ever be a talking point between her and him. It makes no sense without at least some kind of context. You army or something? Nah, I just, just hate these things. I don't think he was asking if he's ex-army because he's using a baseball bat and seems to enjoy killing the walkers. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say he's asking because he seems to know what he's doing and physically looks the part. I just met you. At least buy me a drink first. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, buy me a fucking drink first.
Uh, he's at it again, trying to turn a nasty situation into something sensual. How's it going in there? Did he somehow not notice that she's been outside now for like 15 minutes or something? And how do you explain letting me get away? I must have been seduced by your sterling personality. <laughs> Even saying it sarcastically seems horribly wrong. Guys, you're supposed to be on fucking watch. Okay, so this is getting 10 cents for being one of the most stupid and selfish things they've done in all three seasons thus far. They know the situation that Rick and the others are in. They know that Merle was pretty intent on leaving just a moment ago. And most of all, they know that someone should be on fucking watch. But no, I suppose having a quickie is more important. Glenn, Maggie, if she hadn't come here, we never would have known they were taken. Yeah. But on the other hand, she's really annoying. You still haven't told me. Where did you find them? Where did you know them? Apparently, this is such a cliched and sensitive subject that she stops eating before staring off into nothingness and then stares at Andrea and then stares into space again and then finally at long last just shakes her head when asked, do you want to talk about it? And the thing that gets me is that this is so unlike her. They weren't human to begin with. Right. So you do want to talk about it then? One time I was so excited about my evil plan that I Jizz in my pants These guys are on edge They've been attacked by that crazy ass cowboy some chick with a sword Shit's going down and you're making waves How does he know that they are making waves? Considering all he knows is that they asked if they are going after Andrea and the guy said no That's it Other than that they didn't kill Andrea when she wanted to leave So it can hardly be considered making waves or causing trouble Yet Yeah it was me. I saved her life. Right place, right time. And from that moment, she was glued to you like a lost puppy. Having a detailed conversation about something which didn't happen on the TV show and leaving me mighty confused. Yo! I said five! Let's go! Yeah, and it's been just under two minutes, so f*** you and your five and learn to count, you idiot! So let me get this straight. She jogs into the open part of the woods and yet fails to see any of these four walkers just chilling out right nearby. Either she's pretty blind or the zombies have figured out some kind of teleportation shit. <laughs> Heavily rooted trees that sway side to side when lightly brushed. You're not sending my boy out there again. I look out for him. Like you looked out for Donna? What the hell, man? Either he was trying to make that altercation happen on purpose, or the writing is not really up to par. I mean, back at the camp mere moments ago, these two spoke, and he told them that he had no reason to feel jealous of him having saved his wife, and then he uses it against him here. Hmm. I want to remain as quiet as humanly possible because A, I don't want the madman outside to hear me and B, I don't want any walkers to hear and find me. So the best way to do that is not look at the ground and where I'm walking? Either he's incredibly lucky or he's got some kind of bloody tracker on her ass because he found her firstly in the middle of a field and secondly now inside a building among many buildings. I guess another sin here is that he heard her knock something over when his vehicle couldn't be heard, and thus he wasn't overly close by, and he's inside of his car while she's inside of a building and his engine would be running loudly. So ultimately, this little game of cat and mouse is some bullshit that would never happen in real life. <sighs> 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 
bullshit. He would never have gotten that close to her in absolute silence. And now we're supposed to just assume that he managed to get her up off of the floor whilst keeping her entirely muted and that she was never powerful enough to physically do anything to get attention. You heard about that, huh? I hope you find out who did it. I guess it couldn't have been all that difficult to find out who did it anyway. Find out who was on watch last night, ask who went out in a car, and boom, there's your culprit. Mo. Hey, hey, little brother. And he doesn't answer him because no fucking reason. What happened with you and Glenn and Maggie? I've done worse. You've done worse than try and put together a situation whereby a man you've badly eaten almost gets eaten alive? I highly doubt that somehow, as that's some pretty nasty shit to do to your fellow man. He does know that that's not like a mobile phone or radio, right? And see the reward of the wicked. Oh, off. Even though this extremely loud car alarm has been going for some time, he still decides that the car is worth going through all of the trouble. On top of this, he doesn't once think to look outside of the car to see if any walkers are approaching. Here we see her slip off the restraints from her hands and fingers. But when she's outside of the car, she suddenly has it back on her left hand. <laughs> Worst knife attack in the history of knife attacks. <laughs> Spitting an unusual amount whilst attacking. Oh. Silly teenage, leave me alone shrug. No, this was before. He was asleep. I had a knife. Pick up the pliers. I'm still alive. Yeah. Pick up the pliers. She literally could have been f***ing free by now if she didn't feel the need to have a casual chat in this situation. For this, I'm adding five sins. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best way to invoke a non-verbal signal that you are coming in peace and that you want help. All you have to do is loudly bang on something nearby. And for some unknown reason, she couldn't just simply kick him backwards and then attack him. Really, the only word for it is... Reach the wizard.